Okay. So for those of you who have been on the whole time, uh, this is not the last time you're going to hear this. Please take a moment to answer the 12 style under stress questions that you got earlier in the pre-work. And Mr. Schmidt might even be nice enough to repop that into the chat. Um, you will need to know which questions you answered as true. So let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to FRC Leadership Training. Um, I am Mr. John. I've been with the Huskies team as a mentor for enough years that I have plenty of shirts. Um, and I'm going to get another one this year. Woo uh, we are here today for crucial conversations. I'm very happy to see all of you here. Um, and especially if we have any guests from outside the team, this is really cool that you're able to join us as well. So there's this book called Crucial Conversations tools for talking when the stakes are high. Why are we talking about this book, I hear you asking? Well, you are all going to spend time in this life interacting with other people. There will be times when you communicate smoothly with them. There will be other times when relationships start to go off the rails because of your communication. In the Husky Robotics team setting, you can't afford to have broken relationships. You can't afford to let something fester. when You only have six weeks or so before the first competition, right? That is why we want you to have the tools to reopen and maintain honest communication when something has gone wrong. Then you will be able to address the issue and make a bridge port. I mean, a bridge placed on real trust. Last week, in the Servant Leadership and Team Mindset Training, Jesse and Mr. Schmidt introduced the strengths of a team player and noted that one of them was to be compassionate, which means empathy in action. As compassionate people, we recognize the need to do work to help ease the suffering of others. The actions that we're going to talk about in this session are mental and verbal actions to help both the other person and you get the relationship working again so that you can meet your goals. We will focus on the team relationships that each of you have, but you can and should apply these skills to your other relationships as well. So what does compassion have to do with crucial conversations? And what makes a crucial conversation or what makes a conversation crucial anyway, right? It's based on when emotions get involved and something important is at stake. Let's take a look at what this looks like. So, Mr. Schmidt and I are gonna get into character. And we are working for FRC. Oh shoot, I just popped this wire off. Hey, Mr. John, go get me a waggle, will ya? Go get it yourself, Mr. Schmidt. I have to fix this now. The software team is waiting to test it. Why do you think you're more important than me? I'm not more than important than you, but this task is on the critical path. And right now you are stopping the team from meeting its goals. I was just sitting here doing my job. You came in, broke the robot, and now it's my fault? Yeah, you pea brain dodo bird. It's your fault because you aren't being a team player. Now get the waggo or I'll tell the coach. Whew. Raise your hand if you've experienced a conversation with similar energy or similar pain. I see a couple hands going up. All right. I'm guessing that at least some of those conversations were with people that you needed to get along with in order to reach your goal. So when it matters most, why are we often at our worst? Well, when we see that something important to us is no longer in reach because of some action or issue, we can develop emotions over that perceived loss. Emotions like fear or anger quickly come into play. You might notice next that your motives 
start to change. You had been focused on fixing the robot like Mr. Schmidt, but you have shifted your focus now to winning the argument that is developing. Emotions like fear or anger might be useful if you're running a race and you want that emotion to help push you to the finish line, but we're not talking about a race where there's only one winner. Instead, we're talking about being in dialogue with another person. We are working towards an outcome that is beneficial to both of us. To improve our chances of making it good for both of us, we need to make sure that we understand the information that both people have. So what tools can get us from a terrible conversation to a good dialogue? These are the three tools that we're gonna learn about together tonight. They will help you to both address the problem and respect the person. With any difficult interpersonal situation, it's imperative that you begin with the end in mind. To get both your head and your heart in the right place, ask yourself, what do I really want? What do I really want for the other person? What do I really want for myself? What do I really want for our relationship? And just as important, what do I not want as a result? You know, maybe I want them to be able to enjoy the team and I wanna have less stress in my life. And I want us to be able to build trust. And I wanna be able to get here without having either one of us feeling hurt or embarrassed. And then we get to the and question. How can I talk about this sensitive problem and not argue and waste our time? Or how do I tell them my real concerns and not insult them? So Mr. Schmidt is gonna put us in breakout rooms. Please be sure to introduce yourself to anyone that you don't already know and then move on to the questions that are in the shared document. And you've obviously shared that document already, Mr. Schmidt. I'm gonna put that in the chat right now. Excellent, and, okay, cool. And give everybody a moment to click on it before it goes away. Yep, so yep, I just yep. put in the chat a link to the handouts. So click on that now, so you have it open in a tab, because you're gonna to need to reference it throughout the breakout rooms this evening. I suppose I should probably click on it, which will change what I'm sharing, but hey, that's all right. Um, so then, well, let's get back to here. Real briefly, when we come back, we will share back an answer to each of these questions in the chat. If you want to be specific, you could start your answer with an S for Mr. Schmidt or a J for Mr. John. Um, but think about any of these questions that you want. What is their answer? That crazy conversation we just had. All right. Five minutes, Mr. John. Five minutes sounds good. Thank you, sir. All right, All right here we go. So we're gonna go through the questions one at a time. And uh, so for the first question, uh, what we what we did last time, right, was uh, you type your answer, but you don't hit enter yet. Um, so for the first question, what do I really want for them? You can do this from either Mr. Schmidt or Mr. John's perspective from our story. And uh, go ahead, type in your answer. And remember to hit open on the chat and then enter. I'm assuming people are still typing. All right, starting to see some popping through. So we've got some stuff on not wanting to hold up the project, treating all members with respect feeling welcome and comfortable. 
understanding the criticality of the situation, working out differences, fixing the mess as fast as possible and then moving on while also gaining a friendship with Mr. John. Yep. Taking the project seriously and being able to count on each other. And having no one feel like they were at fault. This is a lot of really good stuff. The, the relationship, uh, you already have that in here and the ability to ask each other for things and not feel like you're being underappreciated. That's all very, very good. All right. Uh, from the point of view of Mr. Schmidt or Mr. John, start typing your answer for what do I really want for myself? Take a few moments to type that up. Go ahead and hit enter if you've got your answer. Okay, that was a whole bunch of answers really quickly. Mr. John wants to feel that he's an equal to Mr. Schmidt, feel respected by Mr. Schmidt. Schmidt wants the robot to be fixed and not have to do all, all the work himself. Yeah, that's generally what he wants. <laughs> a lot of respect, getting things done effectively, um, fixing the mistake quickly. Yeah, Mr. John, or sorry, Mr. Schmidt probably feels like, oh, shoot, this is my mistake. I got to get it done, right? Why isn't my buddy helping me out? A, a lot of respect and a lot of feeling equal or important and not holding up the rest of the of the team. Very good. You guys are, are understanding this stuff very well. Thank you. All right, so for the third one, what do I really want for the relationship? So from Mr. John's side or Mr. Schmidt's side? Go ahead and type in your answer in a few moments while I'll hit enter. Yep, go ahead, start hitting enter if you haven't already. I'll try to figure out where the top of this was. So for the relationship to be able to help each other, feel comfortable and equal, respect in both directions, where they can work together, not hate each other and still be able to work together in the future. Getting along, fixing it together, lots of respect. I'm so happy to see you guys pulling out that respect piece because it's so hard to build respect and it's so easy to lose it. All right, a lot of good stuff there. Um, and then what do I not want as a result? Start putting together your, your thoughts on that from either Mr. Schmidt or Mr. John's perspective. And go ahead and start hitting enter when you're ready. All right, so we don't want tension. Uh, we don't want to lose our place in all these great answers. <laughs> a 
a very detailed answer about compatibility and more roadblocks in an already crammed season. There's toxic environments. Yeah, all this stuff. We don't want people to feel underappreciated or sad. You guys have a very good grasp on this conversation here. This is wonderful. All right. Give me just a moment to remember how to share a screen and to hopefully get the correct screen. Okay. So what you really want and what you don't want out of the conversation is the first part of begin with the end in mind. And I feel like you guys have a, a good grasp on what that means to you. So that's awesome. So now let's move on to the second part. If you don't talk it out, you will act it out. Way too often we find ourselves going down this whole path here in front of you, this path to action. We start with seeing or hearing some observable facts. This is when we should stop progressing down the path, but we frequently do not. Next, we tell ourselves a clever story about victims, villains, or helplessness. We'll cover this more in a moment. We should stop our progress on the path here, but we often don't. Based on that story we told ourselves, we develop emotions towards the other person, usually with negative intent. This would also be a great place to stop going down the path. But if we don't stop, then we act out those emotions using some mix of verbal silence, like changing the subject and avoidance, or verbal violence, like yelling and name calling. We'll talk more about those in the next tool. But the end goal is to stop yourself from traveling this path to action. And instead of acting it out, instead getting curious, talking it out, and learning. So let's start first with these clever stories and try to understand those a little bit better. These stories are called clever because they allow us to feel good about behaving badly while getting terrible results. That's a thick sentence. They let us feel good about behaving badly while getting terrible results. So obviously we don't want these, but what are they? Well, first there's the victim story. Oh, I'm not talking about the victim of a crime. What I am talking about is telling yourself a story where you were beyond perfect and still this happened to you. Can you believe it? In the example, Mr. John had no personal accountability for the problem. So he did not see where he needed to apologize, nor where he needed to make changes in his own behavior to meet the common goal. Next, we'll look at the villain story. The other person is the villain in your mind. So that means that you are fighting evil. And when you're fighting evil, your mind justifies using any means to win. Like the argument earlier where Mr. Schmidt's motives shifted to winning. If this was you, you might label them with a nickname like pea brain dodo bird, or you might stereotype them. You would likely do things that you would not be proud of in the future if you ever get past this villain story. Those around you would likely note that you were the one that destroyed the relationship. Now, a helpless story comes often from a villain story. The other person is a villain and will not change no matter what you do. You may move to verbal silence and not address the issue at all by avoiding them. Or you may move to verbal violence and take out your anger on the other person. You know it won't do any good, but hey, yelling and name calling might make you feel better. So don't think of helpless as being incapable of taking any action. Instead, think of the helpless story as giving you the license to not care anymore. All right, in the handout, 
you have the script from Mr. Schmidt, Mr. John's conversation that turned crucial. Pretend that you as a group were one of the two characters. The even room numbered teams get Mr. Schmidt and the odd room numbers get Mr. John. Start with their observed facts from this interaction and then see if you can figure out what story they each told themselves and work your way to understand their feelings, ending with their final verbal actions. Do you think this all happened because of the Wago incident? When we come back, we'd like to hear from a few groups. So pick someone to report out. And remember, even numbered teams get Mr. Schmidt and odd numbered teams get me, Mr. John. And if you've just joined us uh, in the chat is a link to the handout that Mr. John is referring to. So click on that and open it up in a tab before you enter the breakout room so you can refer back to that conversation. All right. Are we all set, Mr. John? Yep. All right, here we go. Thank you, sir. And uh, we're going to start with uh, from Mr. Schmidt's perspective. So if you are uh, ready to report out from your team who did Mr. Schmidt's perspective, go ahead and raise your hand so we can get you up to the top end of the list there. And we'll go through a couple of people and then we'll move on to Mr. John. So Declan, go ahead. Okay, so we said for the observed facts, the situation is basically that Mr. Schmidt, he did something wrong. He popped off the wire and he's asking Mr. John to get a Wigo. And then we also said that it's kind of like a more high tense situation. This is a roadblock that's stopping them from continuing on work with the robot and people are waiting on them to get this finished. Very good. Uh, Srivasa, you wanna pick up the next part of that? Yeah, um, so the villain, uh, the, sto the story that Mr. Schmidt tells himself at the beginning, or maybe the at the end, is that he who was helpless slash victim, he who didn't receive help when he needed it, and he thought that Mr. John played the role of the villain because he had too much of an ego or something like that. Excellent, very good. Jack, you want to pick it up from there? Yeah, so... Mr. Schmidt then feels frustrated because he sees Mr. John as this villain stopping him from being able to get through the crucial path onto progress for the robot. And he obviously states I get, uh, that he wants to make progress on the crucial path and that's why he's frustrated. Excellent, very good. Noor, you wanna bring us home? Yeah, and then obviously that leads to Mr. Schmidt calling um, Mr. John not some very nice names, which would be then violence. Little bit of comic verbal violence. All right, thank you, thank you all. All right, well, let's switch over to, uh, from Mr. John's perspective. And for those teams who did that, can we get some people up here to, to talk through some of those? All right, getting a few. Uh, Raj, you wanna go ahead and give us some observed facts? Yeah, so we said that Mr. John started off with a very aggressive approach. Um, he said, go get it yourself, Mr. Schmidt, which is kind of like uh, initiating the aggression. So we said he took the approach of anger and like violence to start it off. All right, thank you. Uh, Fies, I hope yeah. you said that. Yeah, so for telling a story, our group said that Mr. John thought he was more of a victim as he was picked on by Mr. Schmidt. And he thought that Mr. Schmidt was maybe more of the villain for kind of asking him. And he maybe thought in his mind that Mr. Schmidt also maybe looked down on him because he thought he was very a team member. So in his mind, that's kind of why he says, well, do you think that we're not equal or something along those lines as well? So that's why he perceives himself as a victim in this, in, in this situation. Very good. Thank you. Helena, um, pick up on the, on the feelings. Yeah, after kind of feeling like he was a victim and helpless, he kind of, he feels hurt, but he reacts in anger towards Mr. Schmidt, which you will see in act. 
Very good. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, and then finally, um, Mr. Jean uh, responds with violence in response to Mr. Schmidt's violence. Um, sort of like um, a reply to it because of his hurt and angry feelings. Absolutely. All right. Thank you all very much. Did a nice job there. Okay. I should probably go back to sharing a screen so we can keep going. And all right. So this is the end of the begin with the end in mind tool. So now let's take a look at the second tool, which is learn to look. So you want to recognize if a conversation turns crucial. When the emotions of one or both of you start ramping up, Remember, verbal silence and verbal violence are the action that we take after we have told a clever story and had an emotional response to it. Now, when actions get observed, then you know you are in a crucial conversation. On the screen, you can see the major categories of verbal silence and verbal violence and some keywords to help explain them. And this is now the last time I'm going to talk about it. At the beginning of the presentation, I asked you all to answer the style under stress questions in the pre-work. So hopefully everybody has had a chance to do that. Um, while going through that, you would have seen some of these, uh, some of these same keywords showing up in those questions. So hopefully you have all of your answers and take a look at only the questions that you answered as true. Which column do they mainly fall under? So for example, a person might have answered true to questions one, four, five, nine, and 10. You could say that they favor silence as a style. But what if they were evenly split? Well, then you could say that they're balanced. So please note that this is only a style that you use. It's not an inalterable character trait or a genetic predisposition. You can learn to change your behavior away from using these styles and instead begin with the end in mind, learn to look and then make it safe. Now, when you're in a conversation, you want to recognize when it turns crucial, when the emotions of one or both of you start ramping up. Let's take in your in your handout, you have this um, you have the what is your style under stress link to help us build a word cloud. So I'd like you to type in your current style under stress that you got to from your questions, either silence, violence, or balanced. And then one additional word that describes one aspect of your style under stress. You can pull it from the words that are on your screen now, or you can pull it from uh, just your own knowledge. So go ahead and everybody do that. Mr. Schmidt, let me know when to stop I just sharing. put the link in the chat as well. So oh, excellent. if it makes it easier for people, you can just click on that. So after everybody types something in, Mr. Schmidt will notice that things stop changing on his word cloud. Um, he's gonna end up pasting it into the presentation so that we can then share it with everybody.
And to get to the server, we have to bounce off of three different satellites and go into a couple of different land masses. So that's why it takes a little while for all the data to get over there. All right, we should be set, Mr. John. So feel free to uh, all right. represent uh, let's it. Let's do this. And Feel free to represent it right after you remember which order to do all these things in. All right. I'm not saying I'm old, but we did discover dirt soon after I was born. All right. So, wow. Look at all that silence we've got there. A little bit of violence. A lot of avoiding, withdrawing, masking, dodging. All right, so look at everybody who's on this call. These are your partners in this team. A large quantity of you tend to go to silence. That means you're not gonna know that the other person is upset with you because they're yelling at you. You're only gonna know because they walked away or because they changed the subject or because maybe they used a little bit of sarcasm, although I don't see that too much in here. Um, so you're gonna, have to, you're gonna have to take that in as a realization, but at the same point in time, there's still a good share of violence in here. And there's all the other people on the team who are not on this call, right? So you have to be aware, you have to look, you have to learn to look that things are gonna be different out there. Okay, let's say that you have recognized that you or the other person are moving to verbal silence or verbal violence. If you've gotten this far, now really is the time to step out of the conversation and work on making it safe again. You want it to be safe for both of you to be able to share your observations so you can understand what the true issues are. and and really get to work addressing those issues. So the first three skills that we're gonna learn for the Make It Safe tool are apologize when appropriate. So if you have the sudden realization that for sure I really said that, then you need to apologize. Contrasting will help to improve understanding. We'll get to some examples in a minute. And retracing your path. If you have moved to verbal silence or verbal violence, how did you get here? You want to work your way back to those observed facts. And then you will have to repeat. We are only human. We all make mistakes. As Jesse and Mr. Schmidt noted in the servant leadership training last week, your conversation will not go perfectly. But nine out of 10 times, you can build the relationship if you do the compassionate work to make it safe. You will likely have to apologize, contrast, and retrace more than once. So when I'm talking about apologizing, the skill, I mean, you have to apologize from the heart, recognizing your role in the problem. I do not mean, I'm sorry if you were hurt by what I said, right? How many of you have heard that? I'm sorry you feel that way. I'm sorry you misunderstood, right? Those things are called fake apologies. You need to be sincere in your apologies or the other person will see right through you and the trust that you are working to build will be destroyed. I'm sorry that you're in this position. I would like to work with you to find a way to make it better, right? That's, that's a real apology. What I said was mean-spirited and inappropriate. I never should have called you a pea brain dodo bird. I apologize. All right, the next skill is contrasting. I've been using contrasting throughout this whole presentation. Sometimes you just say something that is not exactly obvious. 
So now you need the contrast to clarify. You'll need to say something like, I do not mean, and I do mean, right? To help the other person understand your true intent. The third skill in the Make It Safe toolbox is retrace your path. This is similar to the breakout room we did earlier where you notice where you traced how Mr. Schmidt or I started on the path and how we got to the end. But this is different, notice I'm using contrasting here, because this is a tool to help you when you are in the middle of a conversation that is turning crucial. So we already talked about learning to look to see if the conversation is going wrong. If you can see it's going wrong, and they're the one reacting to you, then you must be the one who's acting out. So if I'm acting out, what are these feelings that I'm feeling? You should be working your way through this mentally. Why do I have these feelings? What story did I tell myself? And finally, why did I tell this story? What were the facts that I observed? So I've now mentally moved backwards from act to feel, to tell a story, to see and hear, and I've finally gotten back to those facts. Now I can recognize that there are other facts out there too, and I can get curious about them, and we can start to have a real conversation. So here are the first three skills again in making it safe. Apologize when appropriate, Use contrasting to improve understanding and retrace your path. And then remembering to repeat because we all make mistakes and we'll then need to fix them. All right, we're going to go back to the scene of the crucial conversation where we find our FRC players trying to fix relationship concerns. To set the stage, Mr. John is doing some work and Mr. Schmidt, who has been doing some thinking, comes over to him. Hey, Mr. John, I would like to apologize for what happened earlier and try to get a better understanding. Do you have some time now? Sure, whatever. I realized that I told myself a clever story earlier and I let myself get emotional. I apologize for calling you names and threatening to report you to the coaches. I was wrong and I should not have lost my temper. I am sorry. Yeah, you weren't being a team player. After that incident, I realized that there may be something more broken in our relationship than just that one waggo issue. I would like to see if we could work on making things better between us. Are you open to that? Nah, look, we're good. You say we are good, but your actions seem to be telling me that we are not. I would really like to understand what's going on and help to make it better. Ever since you became the lead, you've been really bossy. You don't care about any of my ideas anymore. You believe that I think I am better than you? Is that correct? Yeah, like when you shot down my idea on how to fix the pneumatics in the middle of the team meeting yesterday. I thought we used to be friends. Mr. John, now that you mention it, I realized that I did shoot you down yesterday. I'll apo I apologize for doing that. It was not appropriate. I do want to be a good team lead, and I do not want to hurt our friendship. I'm focused so much on how to be a good team lead that I forget how I impact the people around me. Can you please help me find a way to be a good team lead and rebuild our friendship? Okay, out of character again. So in the breakout rooms, please analyze this conversation that we just had. How did Mr. Schmidt work to repair the relationship? What tools did he use? Apologizing, contrasting, retracing his path. We'll have a few groups report out, so make sure to choose a speaker for your group. Uh, five minutes again, Mr. Schmidt. All right. 
And, and just to note, not only is the script in your handout materials, but if you go down the slide, you'll see that there's some additional tips under make it safe that you can reference in your conversations as well. So thank you. All right, here we go. Okay, we're doing pretty good on time. Um, uh, raise your hand if you if you want to report out for your team. Uh, hopefully we can get three or four report outs going here. Cool. Um, Samika, uh, what, what did you see that Mr. Schmidt did to make it safe? So we talked a lot about how Mr. Schmidt was like really open-minded, even after um, Mr. John kind of took a dig at him, he took it more as like constructive criticism and he was able to like have that conversation, even though Mr. John was still being a little difficult and wasn't taking the conversation as seriously. And he also had a really sincere tone. He wasn't like trying to be rude or anything like that. He was just trying to have a conversation. Very good, very good. Thank you. Tyler? Sorry, all right. So like, he like asked for if uh, Mr. John, Mr. Schmidt asked if Mr. John had time, which I thought was very important. It would be bad to start something like that without time. Um, he like retraced his path multiple times, um, going back to mistakes he made, uh, even like in the past maybe weeks that Mr. John didn't really like. They, yeah, um, so I thought that was pretty good. Excellent, thank you. Raheel. Uh, yeah, we basically just talked about how Mr. Schmidt uh, gave Mr. John like the benefit of the doubt and he constantly just like, he just kept using like the uh, apology tool and just retraced his steps to find like the root of the problem and then address that and then apologize for it. Did you want to add the piece about silence, Raheel? Um, yeah, he kind of addressed the silence as well. He kind of just kept on pushing and trying to find that root cause of the problem. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Um, Cooper. Um, he used uh, contrasting um, while also addressing that silence. He, um, he contrasts how Mr. John's uh, doors, um, actions and his words were different and we're saying different things. Very good. It, it, that's, that's actually called mirroring. We're gonna learn a little bit more about that in just a minute. Thank you for pulling that out. And then Frank, I'll end with you. Yeah, and he also contrasted like, like the story he told himself earlier with like what he really thinks like, and like he said, um, I would like to see if we would, if we could work out on me on making things better between us and and like like and like as he had said like earlier on like he said i realized i told myself a clever story earlier and let myself get emotional so i feel like this is also like a contrast and also um i just found it interesting that sometimes like it takes like multiple apologies to like make a person like speaking speak about like what he really thinks yep and each of those apologies that Mr. Schmidt made was for a different instance, right? Um, although they were for the same problem, the same overall problem. All right, well, thank you all. Um, I, I do want to um, do my best to communicate. Uh, let's see how I can share my screen again. Um, yeah, that one. All right. Um, I I do want to attempt to re-communicate what, what contrasting is. Um, in, in our small group and in some of the report outs, uh, you guys definitely picked up on the 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 English definition of, of contrasting. Um, I want to put a different spin on it for the concept of make it safe. And in the middle of, of needing to make it safe, usually the skill, and I realize I, I might not have explained it quite like this before. Usually the skill is, 
is uh, used after somebody, after the other person has either uh, reacted badly to what you just said, or uh, they've they've told you what they think you are thinking, and you use contrasting to to say it, in your head you realize shoot I did not get my point across so what I'm 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 not saying that I don't think that your ideas are worthwhile I am saying that Okay, that's a bad example because Mr. Schmidt really did a bad job there and he needs to use apologizing there instead of contrasting. Uh, how about this? I do not mean to say that you need to work extra hours on this and that it's more important than your homework. I do mean to say that the spare time that you have that you're able to give to the team you should prioritize this task over your other tasks. So hopefully that piece of contrasting helps, helps everybody on the call to understand how it's used in the middle of the Make It Safe tool. Uh, and I will be around on Wednesday if you want to talk about it anymore. Um, <laughs> we can cover it more later throughout the season. I'm happy to talk about this stuff more. All right, so uh, thank you all uh, for your insights. Those were awesome. Let's move on. There's four more skills in the Make It Safe tool. There will be times when you're doing the compassionate hard work to make it safe and the other person is still stuck in silence or violence. So take a moment to look back at the script that you had in the handout and recognize where these other keywords came into play. He used ask, I'd really like to hear your opinion on this, or please let me know how you see it differently. Do you have time to get through this right now? Asking is, is trying to get the other person to be engaged in the conversation. He used mirror, you say you're okay, but from the tone of your voice, you seem upset, right? In the actual conversation, Mr. John turned and looked away. That is, that is verbal silence, that is avoidance. He was getting away from Mr. Schmidt. Um, you know, you seem angry at me or you look nervous about doing this. Those are good mirroring things. When the person's actions or their tone of voice do not match what their words are. Uh, we also have paraphrasing. I'd like to check my understanding. I think that you mean, right? You're stating in your own words what their perspective or concern is. And then you can ask, did I understand that correctly? So you'll see that right there in the script that Mr. Schmidt paraphrased. Something that we did not do in that script was suggesting. This works really well when the other person isn't sharing anything, when they are just totally in silence, you need to do it tentatively. You come up with where they might be, where they, what they might be thinking, and you tentatively suggest it. Are you thinking that I pulled you off that project because I thought you couldn't do it? Or, when I left Pat in charge instead of you, did you think I didn't trust you to do a good job? So these are, these are suggesting, and you're hoping to hit the nail on the head or to come close enough that the other person says, no, what you did was this, right? And just as we saw, there are gonna be times when they throw it back in your face Mr. Schmidt was prepared. He walked into that room knowing that I was not in a good place. And he was prepared for me to have some zingers thrown back at him. And he let him go. 
and he kept working on building the relationship and that is part of making it safe. All right, resist interrupting and value everyone's truth. That's an important part of making it safe. I hope all of you are seeing these great acronyms as they pop up on the screen. So if you realize like Mr. Schmidt that something just went down that went bad and you need to go back and fix it, you need to figure out how you're gonna start that conversation. Maybe you know that you need to apologize. Maybe you don't know that you need to apologize. Maybe you just wanna come out there and say, I'd like to talk about this thing that happened yesterday. I don't think that what's going on is your fault. And I know that I may not understand all of the issues. Can we talk about this? Right, sharing some facts, contrasting, being very tentative. The other person is probably not gonna respond really nicely right at the front. And so then you can contrast again. What I want is for our sub team to be able to work well together or for the robot to be able to get fixed while not causing anyone to feel ignored or underappreciated. Is that what you want, right? that's trying to build some mutual purpose, get it so that we're both on the same side. And it's being tentative, right? You're not being the boss and saying, this is what we need to do. You're asking, you're suggesting. And then hopefully you can get, you've built enough safety that you can get into that conversation. Okay, so You've now heard some of the most powerful tools in the Crucial Conversations book. You know enough to start planning and holding crucial conversations of your own. Beginning with the end in mind, learning to look and making it safe. So putting everything together, we want you to think about how you could address these issues. So there's three different choices there of an issue to go after. Uh, each each breakout room should pick one uh, and then we'll report out. Try to use all of the tools. I believe that Mr. Schmidt has a list of those tools in the in the break in the handout slides. Um, and let me let me restate that. Don't try to use every tool. Try to use the tools that are appropriate for the problem that your team picks. Um, if your team room is divisible by three, then do number three. If it's an even number, go for the, the twos and everybody else go for a one. Um, Mr. Schmidt, you're ready to break us out. We're going to have 10 minutes. This is, uh, we're gonna have eight minutes. We're gonna eight have minutes. eight minutes, Mr. <laughs> Schmidt. <laughs> Got it. And you'll get a one minute warning. So don't feel yep. you have to come back till that's up. The slide after the one you're looking at has your crucial conversations quick reference that Mr. John was referring to in the handout. So feel free to take a look at that. All right, here we go. Thank you. All right, welcome back everyone. So once again, let's get some report outs going on here. Um, somebody who uh, did the first one, this is the top priority. You're gonna to need to finish this by Friday. We could have somebody report out what you did for that. Don't everybody show your hands at once. Did nobody do number one? Oh, okay, Alex did number one, excellent, all right. I'll sacrifice for the greater good. Thank so you. We just, <laughs> just talked about like, there might be like a little bit of undermining authority that a person is saying like, who's putting this like delegation on somebody else, like obviously did not communicate, there's a miscommunication there. And they're feeling like they can just put this on another person without the communication and feeling like they can do this because they're obviously in like a some higher like position as they are like putting this on somebody else. So we talked about like them just using like all three of them in different ways and like approaching the situation by like, how did this miscommunication 
So I didn't realize my mic's down low. So we talked about the, you all using all three ways and just beginning with the end in mind, like tracing back your steps, learning to look for like any like facial expressions, any body language that gives off any clues and like how to like fix this for the future and just making it safe and communicating well. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Let's let's move on to number two. Why are you still working on that feature? We canceled that last week. What? Nobody told me. Anaya, go ahead. Sure. So for this one, it's really important because um, someone's hard work is at risk. Um, you've just told someone that might have been working on that feature for a really long time that we're not doing that feature anymore. Uh, so it's really important to keep the end in mind. Um, especially in terms of maintaining that personal relationship, because you guys are most likely going to be working on the same team for a while during the season. Uh, and you want to make sure there's no animosity at all, that um, both sides of the situation are clear. Uh, and you want to make sure that everyone's in a good place at the end of it. Um, but you also want to make sure that both sides feel acknowledged, um, that no one feels like the victim or the villain, that everything is straight facts um, and that you guys are treating each other with respect, apologizing when appropriate, of course, because the situation was kind of sprung onto that person. That's how they might feel. So apologizing, saying like, I'm so sorry that you felt like that, that it was last minute or that you weren't aware that this was happening. So yeah. That's right. good. Very good. Thank you. Matthew? So your end goal in this scenario, I think, should be to make them feel included because obviously, um, you know, they weren't aware that the part was getting canceled. And um, also by the tone that I'm getting from their response, um, and it ties into learn to look, you can tell the emotions they're feeling, they're feeling panicked and kind of stressed. And so then in order to tie that in to make it safe, you need to recognize that and then step back and apologize. So you can say, you know, I'm sorry that we didn't let you know, or maybe we need to better, you know, communicating with you. And so that would help them um, feel more included and also calm them down and let them know that they're not part of the problem. All right. I'm looking at our time and recognizing that I'm sorry, Kalani and Frank and Noor, I am not going to be able to get to you guys. My apologies. Um, uh, number three, if we could have one person from number three, why are you trying to undermine my authority? What are you talking about? Why are you yelling at me? All right. If we had nobody divisible by three, I can just tell you a good one might have been to retrace your path. Realize that you've probably told yourself a villain story about them. And it might help you to understand what's going on. All right. Allow me to get back to sharing screen. And not sharing screen incorrectly. All right. So a little bit of reassurance and a little bit of reality. These are hard tools to remember to use while you're in the middle of a conversation. If you're lucky, you're going to be able to retrace your path right there in the middle of the conversation. There are going to be other times you don't realize what has happened until later, and you have to go back and fix it, like in our example. And sometimes you realize it, but you have to wait until later because you need space and time for emotions to subside on either your side, their side, or both. It is hard to do this well. I have problems doing this well. But if each of us keep trying and we do the repeat part, we will get better. We will improve our relationships after a conversation turns crucial, and we will have better communication throughout all of our relationships, specifically for you guys throughout your team. Now, something that Mr. Schmidt has pointed out is that your team You've got 30 plus people on this call, right? All of you have now gone through this training, some of you twice from last year. 
This gives you a common language and common cues so that hopefully if you hear someone using these skills on you, you'll be able to recognize that the conversation has turned crucial and you need to pause and help them rebuild that relationship. So now that you understand what a crucial conversation is, take a moment for introspection. Do you have any places in your life that aren't going well? Relationships that feel stuck? Maybe because you can't get past something that was said or done? Or maybe it's because you've played out scenarios in your head and they all end up with you and the other person in verbal silence or verbal violence. Think through why you feel that way. Retrace your path to action. Are you attributing evil intent to the other person? What story are you telling yourself? Victim, villain, helpless? We all have places where in a relationship with somebody else, we don't feel like we can tell them something. If we use these skills, we begin with the end in mind, we can tell them that thing. And remember, our truth really enables a change of heart. So there are more skills for crucial conversations that I would love to teach you. There are even skills for how to respectfully hold other people accountable, which we will be discussing next week. If you ever get the chance, pick up these books. They're awesome. Uh, the professional training is really good too. I'm sorry, I do not have time for us to talk through questions, but I will share with you all of the acronyms that I hope you never use. Now, since this is recorded, you can come back to that. We would like as many of you as have interest to come to the next leadership workshops. If I remember correctly, Mr. Schmidt, all the leads definitely should be at the next leadership workshops. Correct. I hear the times, uh, the dates are on the screen. The time is the same as tonight, 8 to 9.30 or 9.31 as the case may be. Sorry for running over a minute and sorry for having to leave out a few people who wanted to report. Um, I think you all learned a lot. It will take practice. I look forward to helping you practice uh, throughout the, the weeks and months upcoming. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. John. This was fantastic. We appreciate you sharing your expertise with us and uh, hope to see everybody back in one week. Thanks, folks. Excellent. Take care, everybody. Thank you, Mr. John. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. John. Thank you.